without further ado, David Chami. to thank uh, Chris and Christopher for the invitation. I remember that since the beginning of certain Sundays, I told them that it was, uh, it was a great idea to make such events in, in which musicians can think together with the audience about their production. But I really didn't expect them to invite me since uh, um, I'm, I mean, for a basic, very basic reason that is that I'm not playing music anymore for the last five years, more or less. So still they did invite me, and here I am. So I guess the best would be that I first explain why I stopped to play music, and um, since it's a question that people keep asking me. Um, fun is that I don't have a clear or unique answer to give, but still I will give now two very basic reasons. First, this one has his barrow in the marketplace, Molly is the singer in a band. This one said to Molly, girl, I like your face. And Molly says this as she takes him by the hand. Oh, bloody, oh, blata, life goes on. Bra, la, la, how the life goes on. Oh, plati, oh, plata, life goes on. Bra, la, 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 how the life goes on. The moon take a trolley to the jewelry store, buys a 20 carat gold ring, takes it back to Molly, waiting at the door, at the door, and as she Gives it to her, she begins, she begins to sing, sing. Oh, bloody, oh, bloody, oh, blada, la, go soon, ra, ah, la, 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 go soon, good. Oh, bloody, di, oh, blada, la, go soon. La 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 how the life goes soon goes soon in a couple of in a in a couple of fears they have pizza home sweet home sweet home home pa 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 a couple of kids right at the day of the moon and moon, Molly, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, happy ever after in the market day. They won't let the gin and then die. Molly, Molly, Molly stays at home. And that's her pretty face. And in the evening, she still sings it with the band. Oh, bloody, oh, blata, life goes on. Oh, la, la, the life goes First, when I was playing music, most of the people that I was interested in didn't seem to be especially interested in the music I was creating. And the second reason for stop playing is that I didn't understand why I should constrain myself to sounds. I mean, I'm a person, I could do many things, and at, at a certain point I felt that to constrain my production to the production of sounds may be not only limited, which is something that I, in the end I can deal with, but it was mainly something arbitrary. This is obviously too personal, and many musicians and composers would probably be able to tell, to tell you why they limit themselves to sound, or at least why they give sound a main importance among other material. 
So let's, let's make uh, then the inverse question. Instead of me trying to answer why I stopped playing, let's think of reasons to play music, and especially to play new music. So here's my list. Reasons to make, you know, to make music. Willing to make something beautiful. This is to play or compose for aesthetic reasons. Willing to empower or to inspire others. Wanting to provoke reactions that might lead towards uh, thoughts, affections and perceptions. To make an impact on the world. This would be an ethical political question about improved awareness, influence behaviors, etc. Use music to, take it, to tackle a problem that is interesting for you. To become f uh, famous, to become rich. This is to increase your economic capital, capital or to increase your uh, social capital. And I'm not judging any of this. To have a feeling of belonging to a scene. Avoid feeling alone, evade the feeling of lack of sense, etc. Want to produce, uh, want to be productive for society. You could believe that music is a way of entertainment or whatever, and in this way it's useful for others, which makes you feel useful, or at least keeps you busy so you feel better. Music as a will to express yourself, expre express your emotions, etc. Let's say that many people give value to self-expression, show their feelings, etc. People who say that uh, can't imagine living without playing music as they can't imagine living without drinking water, as if it were something essential. And uh, well, other, other answers would be uh, because I like it, because I feel I want to do it. Uh, it just, it, it just happens, I can't control it, I wake up in the morning and I find myself playing music. Uh, <laughs> because people like it and I devote myself to the audience. Well, uh, of course, uh, there are many more. Uh, one can imagine infinite reasons for someone to make uh, music. But uh, we find that many of them function as a final cause. This is external purposes. An external purpose is when someone says that he or she makes music because, for example, want to be rich, want to inspire others, etc. Doesn't matter what, but if, you, if your reason is outside the production, that reason is a final cause. You do something to achieve a goal. The criticism that you might face uh, then is that you, your production is determined by something ex external and therefore doesn't follow, respect or construct its own logic. You supposedly stay on a classical dualist conception of creation in which matter is an external thing that a subject, the agent, shapes according to its own free will. Well, other reasons to play music cannot be said to be determined by a final cause. For example, if you say, I play out of necessity or I play just because I want to, then there is no final cause. Let's call this immanent cause. This means that the cause is not outside the act of creation. You create because of an excess of your uh, potency, or uh, when you create, you are somehow confused with your production. The, criticis uh, the criticism you might face here is that if you only follow the, your inner necessity, you fall into a kind of uh, thoughtless production process that is driven, driven only by very basic impulses. In short, I see two main causes, the final cause and the immanent cause. Is it one better or more com commendable than the other? Well, in fact, I tend to believe that both are uh, overlapped. Whatever the reason you give to yourself might be, are you concerned about the new? The new doesn't appear as new if it's not connected with the want, with the desire of the person that embodies it. It cannot be the product of a speculation only. When the creative act is connected to a desire, then the result is not only a formally new instance, but also something else. And this happens because the new is not about f finding new forms, but about producing signs of new mo modes of existence. And mode of existence can be defined formally. There is something that will always escape formalizations. The new has to do with doing something for the first time, but doing it in connection to your desire, to your life, to your want, to your needs, etc. 
it's the only way of escaping obedience, the only way of escaping life designed according to what others have imagined, the only way towards the creation of your own life. Now, how do we do it? How do we go for the new? What are the conditions for it to appear in us? Is it possible to work in order to create these conditions? My friend Vered answered this way. Maybe these are kind of standard procedure questions you need to go over to get more interesting thoughts. But it feels a bit systematic, like searching for, for your keys when you don't know where they are and you don't remember where you put them. You make a list of all the places you should go, you should go check, but then many times, although not always, they are not found, they are found in weird places, like a miracle. Either it's the realization of where they were pops into your, into you, your mind all of a sudden, or they, or they themselves pop up in a place you didn't even realize could have been together. We will go our way together. We will live someday together. Your hand in my hands together. We will make our plan together. We will fly to hide together. Tell our friends goodbye together. We will start life new together. This is what we do. Go away. Life is peaceful. Go away. In an open air. Go away. Where the skies are blue. Go away. This is what we gonna do. Go west, life is peaceful, they go west, in the open air, go west. <laughs> she continues, anyway, this is a search, but maybe the new isn't necessarily even a search, or maybe not always a conscious one. Many times we feel the need for something new. Maybe even the need for something, period. Sometimes we cry out for it, even. And then there are things that show up, or things that we get attracted to, that go towards that something that we needed. It's important to open up, to feel something in an affecting manner, in a manner that feels something wanted. Something that is unbelievably, truly and deeply wanted. There, something is happening. What Bert says is very important. The new appears, and maybe we can recreate the conditions for it to appear, at least not systematically. A new event is like the apparition of a new star in the sky, different from all others. This forces our vision to renew itself in order to take into account a new plane that is not the same as any before. A new star in the sky, a new event in the world, is not a simple, a simple addition to a set but a to total landscape change because all of the new relations that it implies. Such a singular, ev singular event is the new, and it's not related to a line along which successive advances are produced like an evolution. Instead, there are intensive masses that differentiate themselves from one another happening at the same time. You can become this singular star in the sky of singularities or stay under the light of the other stars. One is the situation of the creator, the other one is the situation of the followers. But there are also people that manage to escape these categories. I think, for example, of uh, Charlie Rouse, a saxophonist that played many years with Thelonious Monk. Probably mo uh, most of you know him. Um, hardly anyone would call Charlie Rouse a creator. Still, there is something about him that is very different from other players. I wouldn't call him a follower either, but it's difficult to say why. I admit he's one of my favorite saxophone players, but why, I don't, I don't know exactly. Even if we look at the article about him in Wikipedia, it says, Charlie Rose, born in Washington, D.C., April 6, 1924, blah, blah, blah. His work became highly influential, influential simply due to his proximity to Monk. No better reason given. And then they have to speak specifically about his music, and the article only says 
that when performing, Rob's moved very little, looked straight ahead and wore a solemn expression. Que vengan los chicos de toda parte, que estén los de la luna y los de Marte. Que se vengan los chicos de los planetas prendidos en la cola de algún cometa. Que no falte ninguno para mi cumpleaños y que no se preocupen por los regalos. La 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 lero que ten todo lo chico del mundo entero teruru alguno que de Venus dicen venía trajeron de regalo la tre María. El chico de la luna petizo y firú me regaló una nube que ayó los de Marte bo, me die bo, pues cada uno bo, bo, bo. La 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 be 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 To what degree might our configuration of thought perception misrepresent the new? What are its conditions of visibility? Mary Charlie Rose em embodied the new, but in a way that is still imperceptible for us. If so, can this still be called new? If we um, look around us, I'm sure we can recognize um, creators and followers. And um, I wonder what's the um, impact somehow of this distinction? I mean, what, what does it give? And if, if does everyone should be a creator? Or does everyone should want to be a creator? Is it bad to be a follower? Can you be somehow creative at a certain degree if you're a follower? Um, what what with those people that you really kind of put in, in, in any of these categories? Uh, because formally you can't tell they are doing anything new, maybe, but in their attitude, or there's something that is difficult to name, which still appears uh, as new to us, or at least affects us in a very strong way. Ultimately, these non-quantifiable things constitute the new, and we all have the possibility or the ability to produce them. They can help us shift our thought configuration and can set innovative relations between us, the other, the others, the world, the nature, the universe, whatever you want to call it. In sum, what I tell you is, want more. Put your desire to work. Keep in mind this sentence by, by Spinoff, which I really like, which is, you don't want something because it's good. Something is good because you want it. We are really trained not to want. We are trained not to, to want very little. We are, we are trained to have very little desire. And that's what I think. And 
because of different performances I made before. Uh, I experimented some stuff with people, and it was very interesting to see this. It was very interesting to see how uh, you tell someone, okay, now let's let's think what you want, let's try to do it, and uh, I don't know, people want a massage, but they, they want very little things, or glass of water, I know. Uh, so, uh, what can I tell you? Um, it's really, for me, it's really a lot about that, about desire and about finding a way of maximizing desire. And I found the new, I found the new is strictly connected to that. Questions or uh, I prefer questions. I think this question thing is very stupid. I prefer if you just tell whatever you uh, you want to, to 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 say and we just um, have a conversation better because I don't feel like I have much to answer really. So, <laughs> I think you need a teleprompter. A, te a telephone what? Teleprompter. Teleprompter. Yeah. To uh, for subtitles, you mean? For for reading instead of having the sheet of paper. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then it would look like uh, like Obama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, <had> some, <laughs> I look already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Diego, uh, a question. Do you follow your designer uh, in doing exactly what you did tonight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you heard, have I heard? Yeah. Yes? Okay. You? I don't know. I didn't hear you, sorry. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> uh, I asked whether Diego is following his desire in doing what he did. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I have a question. Um, <laughs> you said when the, the new performances were trying out, you noticed there was very little appetite for some, yeah. wanting something. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> What exactly do you mean by that? that you mean that the, some of the musicians you worked with were not so keen? No, or, no, or they, no, no, no. Or, or the audience wasn't so keen? Or what do you mean? That they didn't want? No, no, it's not that they didn't want. It's just like we made this performance together with the Shan, we just left. Uh, it was a very basic idea just to tell, okay, we are here together, we are all together in this room. Uh, let's think, each of us, we will think of what we. What is the maximum want we can we can imagine we, we can have in this precise moment? And it should be like a, you should be possible to do it, no? Something that you should be able to do at, the, at this precise precise moment, and everyone can can help to, to to really produce this desire, you know? So that was just the idea of the performance. Just that's just small little game if you want to play. And then people really did not like no one really knew yeah, like what they don't want to admit that what they, they want. want to admit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I it really depends don't know what they want. because like depend. I don't know. Most of most of us we knew each other. I don't think it was a matter of not admitting. I really thought it was a matter of, you know, like I have no idea what they want. I really like people were trying. Uh, there were no shocks about ah yeah you, you know I won't tell you. I really, it was really not. Uh, I really felt that it was really no, no, very like, or maybe there. Were, I'm not saying I'm. I'm sure that everyone has a big want, you know. But I'm. I'm, I'm just we're just trained not to, not to even think of it uh, too much. Not to be, you know, not to bring it out or not. To, we are. But what you want at a particular time could be, could be just a cup of tea or. It I mean, it's of course, of course. So, so I mean, that doesn't yeah. mean to say that there isn't something yeah, else then, that generally but, is driving yeah, Of course, but then when you have 20 people, only two answer, you know, or only two or three, then the other ones, they really don't really. I know, that's what I felt. I mean, I can't be wrong. Uh, I just felt that. I felt it myself too uh, in that moment. That it was really like, if I have to think, okay, what did I want? Then I think I did something. Uh, yeah, the next day, I made a performance out of this, this one that I had at that moment. So what was your want? My want was to introduce Vel, which is my friend and uh, ex-partner, or yeah, to all the audience. So I uh, that was a very strong thing for me to do. Uh, I just she was not in Berlin. I broke into her house. I stole some pictures of her. 
scan them, <laughs> and then I I show I I show to the audience pictures of her one by one, explaining all her life, explaining her difficulties, explaining her problems, and. Uh, it was for me. It was really that's what I want. I wanted to 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 make a okay. And then after I really uh, I read some of her texts because she writes too. It was very emotional. I was crying. People were crying. Um, and after that, I say okay. My want is to make a connection between you and her. So this is her email. There are six, seven computers. Please help yourself. <laughs> That was it. And I think I was really, uh, that was really something very strong for me. And I think from, that was, a, for, for example, a performance which I think it changed completely my way of performing. And I think all what I did before that, but I think I wouldn't do it again. When, when was this performance? This was, uh, some, when was it? November? Last year? So it's after your performance with Axel? The, um, I'm just curious. Yeah, after, after, yeah, 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 after that, yeah. I was really surprised that how little happened there. I mean, Later. I don't know if you want to talk about it because not everybody saw it, but um, it was an Excite Music Festival. And, um, can I say the background? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Diego asked me to do this performance, and I didn't want to do it. And um, then Diego asked Axel. I don't even know if you knew this, but. <laughs> yeah, you, you did, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and, um, the idea was that um, it, that we would just do a, it would be advertised as a solo performance, and Diego would interrupt it, but nobody else knew that. And um, I, at first, I said yes, and then Diego, can I say everything? Yeah, of okay. He, Diego wanted me to say to say on the program that it was some really special event that was never happened before, like basically lie about what it was, and um, and then um, I got cold feet and didn't want to do it anymore. Um, what surprised me when I saw the thing with Axel is that it seemed so safe. That it seemed so <coughs> predictable. It didn't seem to be pushing anything. And that was very different than what I thought you wanted to do with this. So the relevance is, you know, wanting to, to do something. Or wanting to do something new. But in that performance I couldn't see what Mm -hmm. It seemed. I just wondered if you wanted to defend it or, or say, you know, well, like, I, I, wrong, usually like, I, will, I won't defend. Say, okay. I won't defend anything I do. Uh, I won't defend it. Um, well, what were you wanting? I, 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 what, the question is, what were you wanting? That was, what what I'm curious. Wanting what were you wanting back then? Yeah, um, yeah. What did you, did you want? Did you feel you got what you wanted in, in that form? Partially, yes. I think one thing I really liked is uh, repetition because I interrupt. I, Axel was playing um, composition and I was interrupting him, like uh, shouting very loud for uh, for a while, and then I would just sit down again and he would start over, and then I would interrupt him again, and that we did that five times. Um, I really like repetition. That is something very personal. So just the fact of having something repeated five times, I found it very beautiful and very inspiring. Uh, the fact of uh, making, uh, having a surprise... Uh... But you didn't seem to be attacking things. The thing, I thought the idea was to really um, expose or, or to attack or to, you know, from the things... No, see, no. it was yes. simply to interrupt. Yeah, it was just okay. to interrupt. Yeah. Okay. I mean, of course... I, th I think when I have an idea at the beginning, it's not clear. So maybe I didn't tell you exactly what I wanted because I didn't have it clear at the moment. But then uh, with Axel, we spoke a lot. We had to go through a lot. We rehearsed a lot. And then after that, something came. Maybe what it came later was not what I wanted at the beginning. That's also possible. Mm. Um, like, for example, when... Yeah. I, I remember because we were thinking what exactly to do. And then it took took a while to yeah. came out the idea to repeat. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Suddenly yeah. this idea of repetition was much much more important yeah. than, than the idea of interruption or the idea of we, we rehearsed uh, access gestures for example, like how he what he would do when I interrupt and 
uh, all these little variations of the repetition, you know, that w that became very important. I understood it much yeah. be, be much like a real spontaneous interruption where the performer really has to react and doesn't know what's going to happen. Mm. But obviously that wasn't, you know, wasn't No, also I think yeah. there's something about the personality of each performer or if each musician. I think Axel wouldn't, if that situation happened for real, I don't think he would... Uh, React, uh, or he would, he he would still feel safe somehow. He would won't be bothered by this. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this has to do with with his personality. I know that's what I imagine. Uh, maybe you have a different personality. I think I saw that's what I wanted to do with to it with you mm -hmm. on the first time. I think you are somehow more. You are more vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> you are more vulnerable, vulnerable. Yeah. So uh, I think that it, it would have been a, a completely different kind of performance. Also. But why would you want to attack someone who's more vulnerable? It's not somebody like, who's not vulnerable. I thought it's much more fun to attack them. I mean, if you're into attacking, uh, I, I, I never thought of of it as uh, as attacking. Well, of provoking and and it's just you know, interrupting something. And I think <laughs> the show. But why would you want to interrupt someone who's vulnerable? Eh? Why would you want to interrupt someone? I found, I found this very yeah. beautiful. This, this to show this uh, vulnerable place in someone. I don't think it, it usually it has, this has a negative. To be vulnerable is something that in our society is taken negatively. I think it's very positive. It's completely positive. One of the most positive things you can have. And I really like to 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 work with it and, and to to show it and. Uh, to work with interruptions? No, no, with vulnerability. Oh, okay. yeah. But it's funny that you said I'm more interested in repetition than interruption. When it's like this piece, I mean, performing today is a little bit about interruption and also the piece with Axel. Yeah, yeah, this is very, very big. Uh, funny how no, that's not important, but it's like a central thing. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying it's not important, it's just the material, but in the piece with him, maybe it became. The repetition became more important than the interruption. Oh, okay. In some other pieces, the interruption becomes more important than the repetition. In this repetition, you have in this. Like you have interruptions. You have repetitions too. Yeah. But I think we are kind of approaching something interesting that um, what you call the new. To me, it sounds much like an event. Uh -huh. And uh, what is an event? An event is something that what happens, it changes the way we understand everything before mm. and everything mm. after. Mm. Mm. And to me, the very center of an event is repetition. So yeah. when an event happens and it's a real event, mm. it's a repetition of something. Yeah. So, But th I think there are two different kinds of repetition that is also very clear in Nietzsche. It says that it can be a repetition of the same and a repetition of the different. And I think it's very interesting to to very interesting to way a way to understand repetition and repetition of the difference. Because how something that is different can repeat. And I think what you're speaking about is because I don't think two events can be the same. So yes, there are there is a repetition, but but this repetition always brings something different. Um, uh, there seems to be an assumption running through your characterization of desire and needs that they're located in an individual, you especially. So to what extent do you care about negotiating many people's needs and desires, for example, with an audience or with um, organizers or with collaborators, etc.? Yeah. Uh, uh, the <laughs> I don't think, uh, I, I mean, I mentioned already that desire is, is something collective also. I mean, it only happens in a collective situation. Uh, I mean, you cannot really think desire in uh, one person isolated from others. But still, each of us has a different desire. This is uh, the way it is. And uh, I think, I tend to think more as... Um, not 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 negotiation because it's, this implies some kind of that everyone gives up something a bit and then you you reach an agreement and I this this kind of uh, I think this is the, the established way of of, of of rating each other that we have like we have a we sign a supposedly a social contract in which uh, we give away all of our 
uh, rights or, or our liberty to the state, and then the state give us back some rights. So these rights, like, are uh, somehow normalized or minimized uh, liberties or desires or whatever. So this is really this is a negotiation for me, and I, I I don't think this is interesting, or I try I try not to react with people like this. That's not what I meant by negotiation. I meant something um, that doesn't necessarily have a have a goal other than uh, you know say peaceful coexistence. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, I have desires, you have desires. Maybe we're on the same stage. Maybe I'm in the audience or whatever. And uh, I don't I don't expect that I will give something up in order to reach a a resolution. But you know. We're both occupying this space at the same time, and we're part of, of an event together. Um, to, you know, to what to what extent do you care about, you know, us peacefully coexisting? Uh, I, this implies, I think, this implies that two different desires are in collision somehow. And I, I think, uh, let the swing and let the rock and roll. This, this can be the case, but it's not always like this. And I prefer to, to, to think or to be in spaces where I feel my desire can be uh, augmented by the desire of the other. Right? And when these two desires meet, uh, there's more desire even. So, um, yeah, I know this is not uh, the ideal world. In the, in the ideal, I mean, the real world is not always happened. And, uh, I, but I think we can uh, learn how to make this happen. We can learn how to, in these situations where you meet people with a desire that goes against your desire somehow, I think we can learn how to just change the situation into something that both desires, we create a bigger desire. And I think it's, this is really a gift. Some people really do know how to do it. Some other people have problems. I myself, I'm, I'm terrible with this, uh, but I'm always open, and I know that there's something I have to do there, and I, I know that there's something that can help me. La de twinger ti do mister al control. I was thinking of something you said. Um, you were saying something about uh, the creator and the followers. And to me, what came into like first word that came to my mind was um, respect. You know, there's something violent and saying there are creators and there are followers. This is yeah. This is not probably not respectful. If you want to put that, this is true. Uh, but it's just a device to to think a bit of things and to provoke. It's just it's not more than that. I don't know if I believe that there are creators and followers. 